Welcome to the December Mondays with Monty, presented by, supported by Northwestern Medicine. I'll be your host this, this time around. I'm Jeremy Reed. I'm the Director of Athletic Communications, work directly with the Men's Basketball Program. Of course, you all know who the gentleman sitting beside me is, Coach Monty. Uh, before we get started here, you know, I'd just like to, to give a shout out and a thank you to our, our sponsor, Northwestern Medicine, who supports this event and so many things that we do in NIU Athletics. We, we couldn't do it, do it without the support of Northwestern Medicine. We'd also like to just remind everyone that band cutouts are still available. You know, we're, we're disappointed that we can't see everyone's faces live and in person at games this year, but you know, you get those fan cutouts supported by FNBO and we can at least see your faces every night in the convo for games. And, you know, there's still a bunch of games left over. So plenty of time to get those fan cutouts, a great unique holiday gift. And uh, coach, uh, if, if wait, 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 before we start, I see my family. I see Nicholas. I see Mason. I see Alex. Thanks for tuning in. I see you guys. Enjoy the show. Coach, since the last time that we that we were together here for our Mondays with Monty, you know, we've obviously we played a few games. We've gotten this, you know, crazy unique college basketball season started. Um, you know, and, and as everyone knows, we've been a little little shorthanded here in the first few games. But you know, seeing the guys out of practice today, it was great to see a couple of bodies back that we haven't seen in a while. You know, Tyler Cochran, Mason Scott, still a little bit limited, but you know, just nice to have those guys back on the floor today. No, it's great because now you can play uh, 10 versus 10 and you have some subs on both teams. Um, tough deal with Tyler Cochran, um, having a quarantine for uh, 10 days, but uh, he's back with us and Nathan Scott, um, the virus that he went through that, uh, you know, I think we're going to have him full go after Christmas, but just having another voice, watching Nathan get excited on um, the black and the, the red team going at it and someone hits a three, I think it was Dan, he runs out and you get a chest bump and, you know, having Tyler's energy back at practice is great, but uh, a tough start, but uh, you know what? It's a lot of basketball left. No doubt about it, Coach. Like, like I said, since the last time we've, that we've been here, you know, we've, we've played a few games and, you know, it's like, as I said, the most unique season in the history of college basketball, you know, playing games in empty buildings, What's it been like to coach in an empty building? You know, something that no one has been prepared for as a player or a coach. You know, what did you expect it to be like? What has it been like now that you've done it? Is there anything that you had to adjust, you know, play, playing in empty buildings and, and almost empty buildings? Well, I expected it to be more like a scrimmage. But during a scrimmage, at least you have all your guys on the bench and you're right there, you're cheering for each other. It's, it's different where you're at. You know, we're in Iowa the other night. It's a high rise. Where at Pitt, it felt like the guys on the bench and the coaches was in the auxiliary gym. You play at home. Our first game, we had five rows behind, and now we're down to three rows. But uh, it's something that not just us, everyone has to get used to. Um, you know, the crowd noise is not really the crowd noise. It's, to me, it's like a little buzzy, like a bee or a mosquito, like you're in a tent, and it's just buzzing, buzzing, buzzing. And I, I think we'll be better without it. You know, I'm looking forward to getting our band in here, our cheerleaders in here, and a few fans. Um, two games have been nice. When we went to Pittsburgh, uh, I saw some Huskies in the stands, parents Huskies, and then when we went to Iowa, we had a few more parents in the stands. That's great. I know our games are on TV, but it's nothing like our student athletes seeing their parents at the game, or at least, you know, talking to them, getting a hug after the game. And it's two tough places to play, but you know what? Surely, but slowly, but surely, um, when this new when the new year starts, we have more people in the stands. You know, coach, you talked about sort of the adjustments and the benches and different places, and different people doing different things. You know, I, I know coaches talk to coaches all, all year long. Has that kind of been one of the the new different things that you've talked to other coaches about? Is you know how did you guys set up your gym? What can maybe we adjust? What, what can maybe somebody else adjust in terms of just, you know, a simple thing that you sort of take, took for granted before with just the way a bench is laid out, where now it's important if you want to communicate with your guys on the bench while still coaching the game on the floor. Well, you definitely, uh, coaches in our league are great. They're open their communication. Uh, we're all trying to help each other. Um, if it's, 
you know, how they're doing their pregame, postgame. Jeremy, I mean, everything is different. You know, just for example, we're in Iowa. After the game, we're used to just showering, getting on the bus, eating on the bus, riding home, getting home a little earlier. Now you have to go to the third floor to enjoy some pizza and something to drink. It's just, everything is just a little, you know, even with the officiating, I think officials get into games more when the crowd gets on them. You know, you can hear a, 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 a pencil drop sometimes. And I think sometimes the officials, they got to snap out of it. But, um, you know, we're sharing as coaches. Um, we're trying to find the best way, of course, to keep our student athletes um, healthy and playing. And then just the conversation that Coach K started the other day. Um, they canceled a couple games. Uh, now Northern Iowa's canceled a couple games. It's still 28 teams that are still quarantined and not playing basketball. But you know, as we as we're doing is we're healthy, we're safe, we're letting our guys play, we're testing daily. Um, I don't think it's going to be a new normal until we get you know into January, where um, where we can get more people in the stands and our guys keep you getting used to playing with um, with limited people. Well, Coach, we, we hit on a lot of those things and a lot of things are different. And obviously, you know, all of our fans that were thankful that joined us tonight that we, again, we wish we could see you in the convo, but let's talk a little bit more about the basketball side of things. You know, through five games, what, what have you liked about what your team has done on the floor? What have been the biggest positives that you've seen from, from your guys early this season? Well, we've had our moments. You know, if I just go back to the last game, I was the first eight minutes. You know, I thought we played outstanding. Top five team in the country. You know, we're right there rolling down a couple baskets. And, and we have the ball. You know, going back all the way to the UIC game, you know, we're at 22 and a half. So we played some unbelievable basketball in that first 20 minutes where we shot almost 60%. We've had our stretches in all games. In the Ball State game, you know, we left for 38 minutes, you know, or 39 minutes. We just came up short. We had the ball shorthanded with a chance to win. And, uh, you know, the ball didn't bounce our way. But I think if our guys continue to work, the basketball guys will reward our guys with some victories. We're working too hard. We're getting our new players familiar with Division One basketball. They've already played a league game. They've already played four non-conference games. The longer the season goes, the more experience, if it's a dog, if it's Kingsley, if it's Zool, if it's Caleb Thornton, they're going to get even more comfortable and you're going to see us start taking off. Um, but we've had some good halves. We just have to put 40 minutes of basketball together. But we're learning. Um, we're watching film. We're doing double days. So we're practicing to get better. Coach, you know, what, one of those spots where you have, have some of those new guys and, and where I think we've really seen some growth in these first five games is, is at your five spot. You know, a, a Don coming off of 14 points against Iowa, playing against arguably the best player in the country. You know, Kingsley had eight, eight in the game before that and nine in the game before that. You know, just, just the development of those big guys, you know, in a, in a position where you, you really can only do it once you're out there against other guys with that Division One size and the way the game is called. And, you know, just, just what have you seen from those two guys in particular in these first five games? Well, speaking of the dog, going into the Iowa game, we should have blew the whistle every time that he touched. You know, he barely touched Gaza. And uh, it seemed like he had two or three fouls on him before you can blink. And the uh, same thing happened in the Ball State game. When you go back and look at film, some of those you're looking around like, how can they make that call? But he's playing through that, like you said. 14 points, had great touches. He battled uh, Garza inside, didn't back away. Um, unbelievable finishes. Like, I think one of my favorite plays in that game is when KT broke down I was, I think they're in the zone and he dishes and you can't tell a dog what not to do because he's going up two hands and flushing. So I like that aggressiveness for him. I like that he has a right hand jump, a right hand and a left hand jump hook, but unbelievable person comes to practice with the right attitude every single day. Uh, Don McCoy will be one of the players that we feature tonight on, on Mondays with Monty, so we're excited to, to talk to Don a little bit more and get a little bit more directly from him about 
what it was like to play against Luca Garza, the preseason Mr. Everything National Player of the Year candidate. Coach, one of the other weird things that we've had happen this, this year that hasn't happened in the MAC in a long time was we had that December conference game. You know, some leagues do it every year. The MAC hasn't. But, you know, what struck me that night was, you know, even though each team had only played a couple of games before that, you know, that game quickly felt like a game in mid-February. That felt like a conference game late in the season, obviously close game. You know, just what was it like to prepare for and to be in – conference game so early in the season? Well, leading up to it, I thought we had great preparation. You can just tell our guys was focused. We shifted from being a non-conference game to a conference game. And you're right, Jeremy, you had that, that feel that it seemed like no one can get bigger than a five or six point lead. I know we stretched it up to 10 at, at one point, then they hit a big shot. Uh, second half, they surge, and then we get the lead back. Typical of that game, I always say, um, of 18 league games or 20 league games, probably 15 or 16 are going to be decided by five or less points. But it got down to one of those things that every possession matter. And, uh, you know, you got to make free throws. you got to close things out. But I thought it was, it was such early in December, and we're into finals. You know, some of our guys, you know, Trina Anderson had a anatomy physiology final that day. And now you got to change gears and then play a back game during finals. So we have to adjust to that too. But like I said, we don't make any excuses. We battle, just came up short. Looking forward to uh, Chicago State. Look definitely forward to when we go to Toledo on the 22nd. Hey, Coach, you just mentioned it. You know, the next thing I was going to ask you about is those last two games before finals. Chicago State here at home on Friday night and then Tuesday at Toledo. You know, you mentioned that every game in this league feels like a five-point game. Well, factually, the last six times that we've gone to Toledo, all six of those have been decided by five points or less. And we've, we've been fortunate enough to win four of those games. Just give us a little thumbnail on, on Chicago State on Friday and then looking ahead to, to the Rockets next Tuesday. Well, Chicago State is, is a lot like us. They, um, just a little different, though. They play mostly on their own, a uh, tough schedule. They've been in-state, out-of-state. They're going to be looking uh, – they're definitely going to be looking to get their first win just like us, too. Anytime you play anybody in state, it's just one of those things. It's bragging rights, just like the UIC game. Athletic, quick team, guard dominant. Um, it should help that we play at SIUE because they don't have great size, but they will play small ball. So we're going to have to adjust to that. And then, like you said, Jeremy, when we go to Toledo, you know, last time I checked, we beat a point. So they're going to they're going to want some payback. They're off to a good start. Um, veteran guards, um, uh, Jackson is his first team preseason, all of this. Um, Littleson, another good shooter. Toledo is always one of the uh, top teams in the back. Um, it's just for some reason, our guys show up. If we're going to defend, we're going to rebound, and then we're going to be able to close out that game. But I'm expecting a, a, a very close game when we go to Toledo right before Christmas. Thanks, Coach. We're, we're going to transition into talking to some of our Husky student athletes, but as a reminder, if you have any questions for Coach Montgomery, put them in the chat. Coach will be back here towards the end of the show, but Coach, we appreciate a little bit of time here talking about the Huskies, and we will see you later in the show. All right, thanks, Jeremy. All right, Jeremy. I'm going to kick this show off. <laughs> Joined now by junior guard Trenton Hankerson. Trenton, first of all, thank you for, for being with us here tonight on this Monday night. No problem. Uh, you know, one, one of the other student athletes that we have with us tonight is Caleb Thornton. So I want to talk a little point guards with our point guards okay. here tonight. But, but first, you know, I have, have to ask you one of the same things I asked Coach about, you know, playing in empty and nearly empty buildings. And, you know, you guys practice, obviously, in an empty building all the time. But what was it like playing a real game in an empty building? And just, just kind of have you adjusted to that? Has it become kind of a, the new normal? Or, you know, what, what's that process been like for you? Um, I definitely think that I've adjusted to it a little bit. I uh, just think that it, it's still a different, a different feeling because um, when we play ball state, it was a close game. And normally in a close game like that, like the fans are really intense. And 
they're cheering for you and all that type of stuff. So, like, you just have a little bit more hype coming from your team. Uh, and, like, like, that's normally what gives you the advantage. So uh, it's definitely different with the NBA arenas this year. Trenton, you know, year three here at NIU, you know, one of the veterans on this team now. What, what's it been like, your, your journey here at NIU over, over the three years? You know, you came here as a recruited walk-on that first year, expected the red shirt, then kind of thrown in at the beginning of conference play, you know, made, made a splash down at Ohio, you know, knocked down three shots, helped us win a game in overtime, yeah. to transitioning into being a starter as a sophomore, and, and now, you know, a starter and one of the, the leaders of this team. Just, just kind of talk to us about your journey as a Husky. Um, well, I mean, obviously I started out small uh, and I had to work a lot uh, as a freshman, uh, just the way that I came in, being a walk on, you know, like the respect is, is kind of low when you're a walk on. So um, just having that, I had to work real hard just to, to gain any type of status. And then my sophomore year uh, was kind of like a building year, more of like a building block, still playing with Gino. Um, he was a good guard. He taught me a lot of stuff. Uh, and then obviously this year is, is a big year. It's a, it's a leap year for me uh, just um, to provide more for the team and to lead the team and stuff like that. So I just, it's been a long process, but I've enjoyed every step of the way here at LA. And last year, you know, you led the MAC in three point shooting, shot 46% from, from three. You know, what is shooting about for you? What's the most important thing? You know, is it getting in the gym and getting up reps? Is it, you know, taking good shots? Is it, you know, what, what, what is, the key for you shooting the three-point shot? Uh, I, I think it's a little bit of both. Um, most definitely getting in the gym and getting the reps and getting the feel. Um, uh, the most important part about shooting is is the feel and then obviously the rim, you got to be looking at the rim, you got to be aggressive and stuff like that. Um, so, but outside of that, yeah, I would just say staying in the gym is, is most important. That's, that's what I try to do. You know, Trent, you come from a super athletic family. You know, a lot of people know that your brother played at Green Bay, but also you your dad played college basketball. Your mom was a college athlete as a yeah. volleyball player. Does that, did that help you with coming into college, having a brother who was just a couple years older than you and having parents who had been through the college athletics thing and just kind of knowing what to expect and, and how to, to make that transition from high school to college? Yeah, it definitely did. They definitely influenced um, every step of the way. They helped guide me. Um, in my decisions uh, of coming to NIU and, and a lot of the decisions that I make at NIU now. Um, so they, and they know uh, exactly what it's like to be a student athlete. They know that it's tough with the classes and, and the, the schedule, the workouts, the lifts. It's a grind and they know, um, and they told me all about that before I even got here. So they kind of helped prepare me for it, for sure. And I know, you know, Trent, your mom and dad, we've, we've seen all over the country over the last couple of years, whether it be in California or I know bouncing to, you know, last year, especially bouncing from your games to your brother's games yeah. and, and all over the place. So, you know, we certainly miss seeing your parents in the stands here at the combo. But, uh, you know, like I, I mentioned earlier, I wanted to talk to you and, and then KT later when we have him on about being a point guard, playing for a point guard. Yeah. You know, uh, Monty is probably the toughest on you guys in practice because he's played that position and he sort of know what, knows what to expect and knows what he wants out of you guys. What's it like playing for a point guard as a point guard? Uh, it's tough for sure, but you have to understand that he's going to get on you because um, he expects you to see things almost the exact way that he sees things. Um, and he, he coaches uh, how he was coached. So he was coached tough, so he coaches us tough. Uh, and we just have to expect that. So, Trent, just a little bit more here about your season so far. You know, you've had a couple of 18 point games, you know, tying your career high. What, what are the keys for you now playing in, the, in this sort of different role, getting a few more shots this year, being on the ball more often? You know, what have you seen from these first five games that we've played, and what do you want to do with your game going forward? Um, well, I definitely hope to score the ball just a little bit more for my team. Um, to break my career high would be great, um, but also to help us get a win. That's the most important part. Um, I think scoring is, is a huge role that we need to fill on this team, uh, along with defense. Don't, don't get me wrong. Like, defense is very important. And that's what will help us win games the most. Um, but offense also is very important, and I think I need to fill a bigger role. Trenton, I appreciate you coming out and joining us here on, on this Monday night. Again, 
Friday night. Next next time you can see Trenton Hankerson and the Huskies, six o'clock here at the Convo on ESPN three. Trenton, thank you for your time. No problem. Thanks. Joined by one of our other point guards, sophomore Caleb Thornton from Bolingbrook, Illinois. Caleb, first, thanks for being here on, on a Monday night. Absolutely. You know, as a as a first year guy here, what is that big? What's the biggest thing in the transition, being a Division One college basketball player versus coming from, in your case, Iowa Western? You know, what 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 are what's the thing that kind of is the most difficult thing or or the the biggest difference? at the Division One level versus junior college? Uh, I have to say since the day I've got here, I believe it's the speed along with the intensity. You know, it's completely different from junior college. You know, as they tell you, while you're there, and you know, just adjusting to it every game, every practice with how Coach Monty uh, prepares us every day is you know, a great way for us to get used to it. You know, we, we mentioned talking point guard play here with, with you and Trendon tonight. As a first-year point guard in a new system, new terminology, needing to know not just your spot, but the, all five spots on the floor, sort of different than some of the other guys. What is that process like trying to learn a new system? And especially in a year where we didn't have a full summer, we didn't have a full fall. You know, can you kind of talk us through like what that, what's that, what that has been like to, to learn all of these new things at a new place? Well, I take pride in my craft and being a point guard. So I do a lot of studying beforehand. So I think that helps me you know, ease into the process along with obviously uh, Coach Monty, as you stated previously, is playing at the highest collegiate level that you can. Um, so having him on us every day uh, definitely helps us. You know, obviously the other thing that most people will know about you is that you you played with Tyler Cochran in high school at Bolingbrook High School. You know, had a lot of success there. How has Tyler helped you transition to being at NIU? Um, every day, every day he comes in with the same attitude that I remember from high school. And it just makes me feel comfortable. It makes me feel like I've been there. And uh, he helped me ease my transition. He, like when he called me and told me that Coach Monty wanted me here, and, you know, he was recruiting me hard, and that he was fighting for me to come here. He made my decision really easy. Can you can kind of talk about about your path to to NIU. Like like we said, you know, you had a lot of success at Bolingbrook, and then, and then went on to Iowa Western. Just kind of talk about your your basketball path, and you know what those well, steps that got you here at NIU. Um, it's just a lot of work. You know, I never get enough. You know, I had a lot of times where I doubted myself and didn't know if I'd be able to make it to this level. And you know, just continuously putting my head down and believing in my dream. You know, going to Iowa Western, being coached by Coach Johnette, and then coming here, you know, being coached by Coach Monty, um, has been nothing but nothing short of a dream to come true. Does it sort of help that you you had to pick up a new system at Iowa Western and had one year to sort of master that? And not to, to picking up another new system, you know, before yeah. you have to do that, does it become easier a little bit? Uh, slowly become a veteran, you know, uh, in, in a sense, you know, even though they're two different systems, but you know, understanding the concepts that aren't too too far fetched from each other uh, definitely made it a little bit of an easier transition. You know, I, I mentioned this to Trenton, and it's kind of, you know, it's, it's the unfortunate theme of this college basketball season, you know, playing in empty and near empty buildings, you know. Sort of the same same thing I asked Trenton, you know, what's that been like for you? What did you expect it to be like? And now that you've done it, like, is there have you gotten used to it? Is it still kind of weird when you go out for games? What what's it like for you playing in an empty building? Oh uh, yes, sir. It's a little bit different. Um, but I always equate it to playing open gym, but a little bit more structured. You know, guys grew up playing in empty gyms their whole life, you know, it's it's nothing short of uh, going in there and playing with your friends, but this time you're just playing against some friends. Hey, my buddy's got that scholarship. Yeah, he got that scholarship. Um, I think that you know, it just comes with more games and more experience that you know everybody will get used to it eventually. And then the other question that I asked Trendon, you know, talking point guard play, you know, you playing for a former point guard in Coach Monty. You know, as a point oh, guard, the best of all time. You know, shoot we, the we can be up. tough on you guys and expect, you know, perfection out of you guys, expect you guys to, to be able to run a team and know all five spots. And, you know, what's sort of that been like, you know, being a point guard, playing for a point guard? 
understanding that nothing that he's saying isn't for us to get better. Uh, he played at the level that everybody dreams of playing at you know, Michigan State. And, you know, understanding that what he says, he understands and he knows because he got coached by one of the best as well, and he's taking pointers from him. Um, so we got to get that yelling and, you know, the intensity from Coach Monty, you just got to understand that it's just low. And then, you know, for you, Caleb, as a first year guy here at NIU, outside of basketball, what has this first fall semester been like in school? You know, classes are online, you know, things on campus just aren't quite as active as they would normally be. What, what's it been like to be a new guy in a new place in a year where you can't quite socialize like normal and, and do all the things that, that everyone's used to? Um, luckily, I'm close to home, you know, so uh, sometimes I get to see my parents and my family. I'm a pretty uh, kept to myself guy anyway, so that helps a little bit, you know, with it being, you know, COVID-19 going on in quarantine, but uh, like you said, it's just it's something that you have to deal with, and hopefully, you know, uh, in the new year, we can experience something new. Well, Caleb, I, I think that all of our fans are excited to finally see you in person, whenever that may be. Uh, we appreciate you coming out here on a Monday night, and we look forward to Friday night against Chicago State. Yes, sir. Caleb Thornton. And next we'll bring on a Don McCoy. All right, we've talked the little guys, we've talked point guards with Coach Monty, with Trendon Hankerson, with Caleb Thornton. Now let's go in the post. Talk to the big fella. Talk to Adon McCoy. Adon, first of all, thank you for being with us tonight. Um, you know, sort of similar questions to, to what I asked Caleb about being a first year guy here. You know, what's been your biggest adjustments as a Division One basketball player coming from, from Daytona State? I'd say probably just like the tempo, the physicality. That would probably be the two biggest things because it's like you go to your college level and your guys are like Division One, like two. Or sometimes just quitting. So I would go and play a game against somebody who's going to MLB. And then the next game I play a game against somebody who's going to NAIA three. So. And how much size did you typically play against in junior college? I mean, you're you're a big guy. Like I said, it's six nine. But certainly there are bigger guys that you will play against. And it, typically in junior college, were you playing against guys that were your size, bigger than you, or was it all over the map? It was. It usually be all over the map. Typically, guys would be closer to my size. See last game, like going against a big guy like Luca Garza, probably never see that happen. You know, a dog coming here from Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. I, I did some research today. There's only been seven Division One basketball players from Edmonton in the last 20 years. Yeah. So, how did you get started playing basketball, and, and what what was basketball like for you growing up in Edmonton? Well, I got started initially because when I went into my like junior high, that's what we call it in middle schools. I was like taller than everybody, so I was like it was because we do seven to nine in our junior highs. And I walked in grade seven. I'm like six foot one, so they're like, oh, he must play basketball. And I'm like, no. So they told me, okay, come play. I was terrible. I had to get because I never played, so I was like really, really uncoordinated. Had to work the whole summer before that and get better. I kept growing every year. So like I go from like six one to six three to next thing you know, by the time I'm in the I'm six five and then I got better at it. And that's when I started playing clubs and then just basically progressed after that. And then you finish your high school career in Ontario, yeah. Brantford, Ontario at the Rise Academy. Yeah. What was that decision like to go across the country to finish high school in Ontario? I mean what's gotta be three thousand miles away from home. Yeah. You know, what, what was that decision like and, and what was that final year of high school like in, in Ontario and Brantford? Well, I actually did too. I left my grade 12 year and I did post grade year and it was just a big adjustment. Like, I had to go over there kind of just, I was really the majority of the time on my own because a lot of teammates lived like an hour away and they're Ontario based and they just go home on the weekends. So I just stayed there and I just go to the gym, work out, go to this, uh, work out. And it's, there's nothing else to do there because hour outside of Toronto, a small city, so that's all I really had to do. I just basically stayed in the gym until I got adjusted to everything. 
small city, hometown of Wayne Gretzky. For, for those of you watching, want a fun fact on, on Brantford, Ontario. And then two years of junior college. You know, taking that step and go, going down to Florida, you know, I can't believe we got you back up here in, into the cold weather, quite frankly. But, uh, you, you know, the, the difference between that level and this level, you mentioned, you know, the size of the guys and, you know, the fact that you're playing against guys of, of all different skill levels. Now that you're going against Division One competition on a, on a daily basis, have you felt yourself getting better every day? Because we certainly have have seen a lot of that progress on the floor in games. Yeah, I felt myself getting better. I had to, like, slowly pick up, though, and I, um, I did get better at the other level. So I had to start just, like, coming up with a little point and student playing so that way I could go the floor and I should. So I got to learn. Like, I got to – my teammates have been telling me, like, you got to get lower, get wider, be more aggressive, you got to be more assertive in the post. That's what they've been telling me playing the teams. So that's basically just the whole thing that well, I, th I think a lot of those things have showed, you know, yesterday at Iowa, again, playing against National Player of the Year candidate Luke McGars of 14 points, 7 of 10 from the field. You, you know, what was your mindset going into a game where you know you're playing against one of the best players in the country, a certain first-round NBA pick next year? You know, how do you take on that challenge for yourself individually, you know, center versus center? I mean, like, I kind of just thought back to when I was back in high school because uh, – I was lucky enough to play in a league where we had like two guys go to the NBA in my prep league. Like one of them, he's on a two way, I think, in the mix, and another one, he's on a Thunder. Plus, like growing up, when you play at one of a certain level you know, basketball in Canada, you see the top Canadian recruits. So at the time, it was like the RJ Barrett's, all that stuff. So now all these games are going. So I'm not really, like, I'm not phased when I see people like this because these guys are one of the three picks or are drafted and they go on the biggest stage. Of NBA All Stars, so like going against somebody like that is just prepare yourself and see you can show up where you go. Well, you know, Don, we certainly have seen you know your post moves. You know, you got the jump hook the coaches talked about. You know, you, you got the little short jumper. You know, shooting sixty one percent from the field, eighty three percent from the from the free throw line. You know, what does it take as a big guy to you know be that good a free throw shooter? You know, we see so many big guys. You know, Shaq and so many of these other guys that struggle at the free throw line. But you have a great touch from that free throw. Uh, There's actually like back to my junior college days because my freshman year I shot I think it was like 60 percent somewhere around there, and my coach had somebody from around here in South Florida come up and teach us about like the psychology of shooting. So he just kind of like if you don't shoot 90 percent, like you're a bad free throw shooter. So he taught us little techniques like uh, I think it was like a red dot on the rim. You just aim for that and you just keep aiming while you shoot. You're just gonna keep hitting more. Shots, so I kept just working on that, working on my shot all the way from my habits from when I was in prep school to Juco. Next thing you know, over time, I'm speaking a better shooter. So when we see you at the free throw line during games, we can know that you're visualizing a red dot on the rim. Something like that now. He said something. He said a red dot. We do something different. He said it's different for everybody else. Fair enough. And a dog, you know, I asked Caleb about this. I asked Trenton about this. You know, playing in an empty building. You know, it's, it's COVID, it's this weird year, you know, we're, we all have to adjust to it. You know, what's it been like for you playing in an empty building, you know, no fans? It, you know, what's, what's the, has there been an adjustment or do you just go out and play? You know, what, what's, what's your mindset when it comes to that? It's kind of one of those things where you just go out and play because, like, the majority of the time before I even been on the organized teams, I'm in the gym, with no fans, just trying my hardest to get better. And plus, while I was in junior college, like, a lot of where I was at junior college, sometimes where you play games, you would have a top 20 matchup. You had to be the same thing, just parents in the stands. So I just kind of got used to you just show up and go play no matter what. Well, Don, we appreciate having you here tonight on Mondays with Monty. Look forward to, to you and the rest of the guys playing on Friday night again, Friday night, 6 o'clock against Chicago State. So, Don McCoy. All right, thank you. And we'll be back with Coach Monty and some questions from you guys. Oh, sure, thank you.
We're back with Coach Monty. We hope that you learned a little bit more about Shrendon Hankerson, Caleb Thornton, and Don McCoy. You know, now, Coach, we got a, a few questions from, from some of our fans out there watching, you know, and I'll start with this one. You know, just how excited are you for the future of this team as we head into conference play? I'm excited. I've seen enough uh, in practice every day that I know we have a high ceiling and our best basketball is ahead of us. Our new guys are getting experience. Like I broke it down to the, uh, to the staff this morning as in all of our new players only had five games. You know, in previous years, we've had an entire summer. That's three months. We've had a, a, a long fall. We have exhibition games. We have a few tune-up games. But we've had no tune-up games. So our ceiling's still high. Yes, we're not where we're at where we want to be right now, but uh, we still have January, February, March, two games in December. Hey, this team's going to come around, and they're going to make uh, they're going to make some noise. And we're going to start winning some games. Coach, this next question you know deals with you know one of the spots this year that we've we've had to fill with you know Eugene German and, and offensively, you, you know filling his his role in those twenty points that he's given us for each of the last three years. You know. What is the plan, and you know how do you fill that that gap in, in scoring and in shooting that that Eugene left? Well, I, if you look if you look at the first five games, um, it seems like Trenton Hankerson is, is adapting that role the most. Um, one game he had twenty some shots. Um, he had career high eighteen points. He had fifteen points. He couldn't get it going last night, but it's going to be Trenton Hankerson, but also Darius Bean's going to get a bulk of those shots, and now. Tyler Cochran. Before Tyler went out, he was averaging 15 points in those first two games. So now we have Tyler back. It's going to be more of a, a three-headed attack. Slide Caleb Thornton with this speed and quickness, and he's going to get to the basket. But three guys, if you combine all three of those guys, they should be double digits every single game. Coach, our next, our next question is, uh, is about, you know, being shorthanded. And, you know, we, we talked about, you know, Nathan Scott and Tyler Cochran being back on the floor for practice today. And, you know, this question is, you know, an update on Justin Lee, who, you know, there's some exciting things potentially coming with Justin as well. A little birdie that, you know, Justin Lee finally went um, five on five. And I think the last time he was five on five, it was, as Chris McMurrin said, it was back in the Central Michigan game at Central Michigan. And I don't know the date on that, but that's a long time ago. It had to be, I don't know, maybe it was a February game, but uh, he's in contact now. Um, he's full goal. And uh, hopefully, I mean, I'm not going to worry that uh, we can see him before the new year, but if not, definitely after the new year. You know, Coach, I'll, I'll tell you how long ago it was that, that, it was, that we last saw Justin Lee. None of us ever thought about wearing masks. <laughs> you know, there were fans in the stands. You know, it was it was back in the good old days. So no, I mean, I'm, I'm happy that we got that question. You know, we were certainly excited to see Justin getting back out there a little bit practicing, and you know, he's, he's another guy that will definitely help this team and bring some length and a little bit of experience from last year. And we're excited to to get Justin Lee back healthy and playing some games. Coach, our last question, you know, you know, I think this is one that everybody sort of wants to know about, you know, what are the keys to see this team have, have some success and, you know, push through and start winning some games? You know, it's been a tough start. Like you said, we've had a lot of new guys and we've been right there. You know, what do you think are the most important things and the keys to, you know, breaking through and winning some games? Well, we have to defend the rebound for two halves. Um, we put it together for 30 minutes. You have to put it together in a college game for 40 minutes. You know, both teams want to win. Uh, we have to limit turnovers. Right now, we're, at, we're giving the ball away 16 times. We have to narrow that down between, you know, anywhere from 8 to 12. Um, we have to make free throws. Right now, we're shooting about 64%. We have to be better, especially in clutch, but we have to make free throws. And then we got to knock down some shots, some perimeter shots. Um, you know, going up against Iowa, when they're making 15 a game, and we're right about four or five. We want our guys to shoot with confidence, but they're in the gym. We're going to start making those shots. But, uh, you know, it's going to come. It's not going to come overnight. Um, I'm just happy that we have a few more days to prepare for Friday's game against Chicago State. And then hopefully we can do some momentum on that and go down to Toledo 
and uh, surprise them. But uh, the forecast says, especially in the year, new year, don't bet against the Huskies. We're going to turn this team around. Well, Coach, you know, I know working, working with you in, in college basketball for long enough, you know, this is the most exciting time of year for both players and, and coaches alike. You know, finals are over. You know, it's just about basketball here for the next few weeks. But we're excited to see the Huskies get back on the floor on Friday night. We appreciate you being with us. You know, once again, we want to thank Northwestern Medicine for sponsoring Mondays with Monty. FMBO cutouts still available. You know, go online, NIUHuskies.com, get those cutouts. We want to see your faces in the stands. Coach, any, any final thoughts? I'm excited. I mean, you know what? I didn't change the outfits, you know, like, like Jeremy said, that uh, it's no more school. It's we're two a days here where we practice in the morning, then we lift, and we're back at it tonight. So I'm, I'm already got my stuff on to get some shooting, shoot up the offense, sharpen up the defense, and we're going to get after it here at the Convocation Center. Sounds great. Again, we want to once again thank Coach Monty for being here. Mondays with Monty supported by Northwestern Medicine. We look forward to, to you guys tuning in on Friday night when the Huskies take on Chicago State, 6 o'clock on ESPN3. Thanks, Coach. Go Huskies. <laughs>